All right. Now the chain has got a length of a known value. Why is that important? Well, if you're going to populate the, the chain with a, a known number of lengths, then the chain length is not some uh, continuum of lengths. It's, it has to go in very discrete length increments based on the length of the link. Say that five times fast. So what is the length of the link? And how do you set that up? Those are the next two questions. Well, the chain is going to be made up of two different kinds of links. And if the period or the distance between or the length of the link is, say, it's a half inch, then the chain must grow in increments of whole inches. You know what I'm saying? And so the chain must be then, if that's the case, it must be either 66 or 67. or 65 can't be anywhere in between. That's something that I know for starters. Okay, so how am I going to assemble now the links to this curve? Well, what are the kinds of things that I can populate along a curve? Points. Yeah, points a good way. So let's see, if I ask for a point so if I come close to it, it pre-highlights a single segment. If I tap the right mouse, that's like query, select, go to the next thing. Or check this out. If I right click, hold, pick from a list, and I can then pick curve F7 sketch 2 or curve F7 F sketch 2. <laughs> and that tells you the difference between them, doesn't it? No, but at least you can see what's going on here? One selection is just a, a single piece and the other selection is the whole of it. Why does that matter? Well, because I want to populate the whole of it. So that's what I'll do. So this point now is on that entire curve at some spot on it. Currently 0.7 ratio. But what if I change this from ratio to real? Now it's 38,795. 38,795 what? Well, that's arc length. So it, it can go anywhere from 66 to 0. So I'll change it to 0 right now. And now that's the 0. Now I don't really care where the 0 is because what I'm going to do is I'm going to pattern it. And I'm going to pattern it by its dimension in equal in increments of one inch. And how many am I going to make? Well, I, I think it's 65 up my number that I'm at right now. Let's see. Say that again? That's right. The derailleur is not part of it unless I screwed up somehow, in which case it, it could be, yeah. That's, actually, that's a good point. So let's take a look at that while we're, while we're thinking about it. And uh, I'm going to remove the perimeter parameter, just delete it. And then it'll put that angle back as no longer variable. And let's pick these pieces more specifically. Just to make sure that we're not picking up the lengths also of the derailleur pieces as part of the same sketch. So, insert, that will go to sketch, dimension, perimeter. Replacing the angle. That was exactly it, good call. And so it's 50 or 49, let's make it uh, 49. And so, perimeter doesn't need to be continuous, or contiguous, or tangent for that matter. So that's, a, that's another interesting observation. 
Now, I'm not exactly sure the significance of a perimeter that's not continuous. <laughs> um, and so it's kind of a mis misnomer, isn't it? It's not really a perimeter at all. It's, a, it's just a summation of the individual sketched line segments. But this gives me the ability to make that number 49, one inch apart, and now we have 49 points. Okay, super. Can I assemble my links to these points? The answer is yes. But isn't it easier to assemble things to coordinate systems once the coordinate systems are already set up? So check this out. I'm going to say give me a coordinate system now that is located on that very first point. But what is its orientation? If I leave it, say, with respect to, uh, yeah, let's, let's do it this way. If I leave it with respect to uh, this, this coordinate system, then the coordinate systems will populate ref pattern. but they'll always be located with respect to some weird place. I want them to follow the trajectory. And so this is where it gets to be fun. Check this out. If I edit the definition and the orientation of this coordinate system, and I use for my first orientation the next point, the coordinate system is pointing in the right direction. However, it causes the pattern to fail. So what is the trick? Let me delete this pattern. Let me show you what the trick is. I'm going to edit the definition of this first point and add another point on that same composite or curve combination. Another point that's also real, but not one inch away, but 0.5 away. And then I'm going to change my pattern, edit the definition of the pattern, so that the pattern doesn't just pattern the first uh, dimension, but it also, with the control key down, I'll pick the second direct dim dimension and pattern it also at the same increment. So now I've got a pair of points that are patterned. Okay? So let's take a look at that first one again. The first point feature is a pair of points. The second instance of the pattern is another pair of points. And so what that means then is when I set up my definition for the coordinate system to have the direction be the second point of the first instance, then I can pattern it and the coordinate systems follow the direction of the chain everywhere along it. And so what does this mean? Now I can assemble the links by coordinate system and it looks just like this. Link one gets assembled by coordinate system, and then link two gets assembled by coordinate system also. The only difference is that the first pattern of points and coordinate systems are uh, at zero, and the second set of points and coordinate system are offset by the length of the first link, because they are indeed independent of each other. 
what are some of the options that you end up with? Well, first of all, you do have the mass properties correct. You do get the ability to evaluate interference, uh, uh, things of that nature, and it looks great on a drawing, and it looks great uh, in your presentations and all those places where it needs to look. Plus, it was easy to do, you know, once you know how to do it. 